How to Frighten a Narcissist. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Halloween's a little way off, but as the nights start to draw in and the temperature drops, at least in the Northern Hemisphere anyway, with the onset of autumn, or fall for our transatlantic cousins, people's minds will be turning to the question of Halloween and all things spooky. <laughs> And is that how you frighten a narcissist? Well, as you know, part of what I do is inform you about the way that we behave, operate, think and function so that you can gain a much greater insight and understanding into the way that the narcissist is. This clears the myths, removes the uncertainty, gets rid of the confusion. Those factors make it all easier for the narcissist to control you. I have been writing about and talking about narcissism for years now, with a substantial body of prodigious work which is unrivaled in its depth, in its analysis, and in its usefulness. And part of that remit, as I extend my legacy, is also to help you understand where you're being given misinformation. And, once again, I'm going to detail instances where a particular site has told you how you can frighten a narcissist. Now, the first thing that this site misses is the fact that you shouldn't be engaging with narcissists. You shouldn't engage with the narcissist because when you know that you're dealing with a narcissist, you should apply the first golden rule of freedom, which is once you know, you go. You get out and you stay out. That is the most effective thing to do because then you're not going to be abused. You're not going to give the narcissist any fuel, which means the narcissist doesn't have a reason to keep coming after you. The narcissist can obtain control through the second or third assertion of control without darkening your doorstep. You're going to lower your own emotional thinking where you're an empath. You're going to reduce the risk of being hoovered in the, first pl in the future. And of course, articles such as this, written by people who don't truly understand narcissism, completely fail to tell you about the necessity of the implementation of a no-contact regime and, and cause people to wrongly think that, one, you can continue to interact successfully with a narcissist, and secondly, that you can actually take steps that will cause you to frighten a narcissist by following their guide. Well, I have news the suggestions that they make will not frighten a narcissist. On the contrary, they'll edify, annoy, infuriate the narcissist with the adverse repercussions for the individual who is attempting to frighten the narcissist. And therefore, as part of educating you and ensuring that you don't follow these mistakes which have been detailed, I'm going to tell you what they say you could do to frighten the narcissist and explain how that's simply wrong. The first one is setting firm boundaries. It states, there's nothing more a bully fears more than consequences. Actually, it isn't. It states, if this person's behaviour is problematic, then make it clear to them that you aren't going to put up with it. Well, good luck with that with the narcissist. It's not going to get you anywhere at all. It is pointless seeking to set boundaries with a narcissist other than through a no-contact regime and because narcissists don't recognise them, because we have no boundary recognition. We operate with a sense of entitlement. If you try and set up boundaries with the narcissist, all the narcissist will do is trample over them as the assertion of control, leaving you frustrated. If you try and establish firm boundaries, you're wasting your breath and you'll just annoy the narcissist because it's a threat to control. The narcissist isn't going to be frightened by it. That's errant nonsense. The second suggestion they make is that you call them out when they cross a line. That's not going to frighten a narcissist either. They stay, if they outright lie, insult you or cross a serious boundary, do not let them get away with it. Well, if you point this out to a narcissist, guess what? The narcissist isn't going to go, oh, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. I'm terribly sorry I crossed a line. I won't do it again. They're more likely to go, I didn't cross a line. What are you talking about? Denial, which will frustrate you and lead you into a circular conversation. By telling the narcissist that they've done something wrong, by accusing them of lying, by claiming that they've insulted you, even though you may well be right, all you're doing is challenging the narcissist and providing them with challenge fuel. 
We won't frighten the narcissist. The suggestion that this frightens the narcissist is ridiculous. All you're going to do is get yourself in for a tongue lashing. The next one that they suggest is a way of frightening a narcissist is to speak over the narcissist if they interrupt. Well, you might feel better about yourself for having asserted yourself, but all you're then going to do is annoy the narcissist because you talking over them when they interrupt, even though, of course, they're rude for interrupting, is again going to be a threat to control, which will result in the narcissist stating, why are you talking over me? The narcissist isn't going to be frightened of you. The narcissist may well say, oh, there's no point in me talking to you if you're going to be like that and walk away from you. Okay, you're spared listening to the narcissist, but the fact is... It's not going to scare the narcissist. The next is to suggest that you withhold intense emotional reactions. Well, best of luck trying to do that when you've got a narcissist who's repeatedly prodding you, particularly the empaths amongst you and those of the Giza persuasion, really do struggle to keep those intense emotional actions, reactions rather under wraps. But there's more to it than that. You might be able to keep your mouth shut, but your body will be moving, your eyes will be conveying emotions, your facial language will be conveying emotions. We still get the fuel. And even though you might not be saying anything, you're still reacting, which means the narcissist gets what he or she wants, and they're certainly not going to be scared by you keeping your mouth shut. The next suggestion to scare the narcissist is that you stick to the facts. Well, that's pointless. The narcissist doesn't recognise your facts because the narcissist looks at the world through an alternative lens. The narcissist has their truth, driven by the narcissism, and a rewriting of history. Thus, if you keep banging on about what you see as the facts, yes, you might feel a bit better because you've stated your case, but if you keep doing it, you're just going to annoy the narcissist, which will, release, which will lead to heated ignited fury, being poured in your direction. In the circumstances, that will then mean that you are going to have them lash out at you. The next suggestion to frighten a narcissist is to tease them playfully. I would suggest that you go and take a fork and stick it into an electrical socket for all the good that it's going to do you to tease a narcissist playfully. Narcissists don't like to be teased, but it won't frighten them. It'll just annoy them. It'll be a threat to control, but you're not taking the narcissist seriously. And in such circumstances, that means that all you will end up doing is irritating the narcissist and again be on the receiving end of some form of devaluing behaviour. Teasing a narcissist is a very bad idea, a bit like sticking a fork in a, an electrical outlet. The other suggestion from this site for you to frighten a narcissist is that you offer your support. Well, that's not going to frighten a narcissist. You offering your support doesn't affect the narcissist's concept of being independent. It shows that you're under control and it's a provision of positive fuel. The narcissist might reject your offer of support, but the fact that you've offered it in the first place is right up the street of the narcissist. You've demonstrated you're under control, you've provided positive fuel, and that's what the narcissist requires. They may not rely on the support because they regard themselves as capable, but you've given them something they want. You've not frightened them. This ridiculous guide then suggests that if you want to frighten a narcissist, you guide them into expressing gratitude. Hmm. Well, again... If you're trying to make the narcissist do something, you're going to come up against that intransigent perception of the threat to control. And as a consequence, it's just going to cause problems. In the circumstances, that isn't going to frighten a narcissist. It'll just irritate. The next suggestion is to be loud and proud in social settings. States that narcissists can be a lot like schoolyard bullies. They're less likely to target you if they think you're a force to be reckoned with. No, indeed, certain narcissists will be more attracted to you for the purposes of breaking you. It states that don't be shy from controlling a conversation or standing out in the middle of a party. This may scare them off from getting out of line. No, it won't. You hogging the limelight is most likely to result in the narcissist having a threat to control and causing them to do something to spoil the occasion, to bring the control back onto them, or, even if they don't do something in the moment, they will lash out at you privately because they will lambast you 
for being somebody who's hogging the limelight, that was making it all about them, that was being an attention seeker. It isn't going to frighten the narcissist. It'll just make the narcissist react to get the control back over you and over other people at the event. The final suggestion to scare a narcissist is to enlist others to join your cause. Do this directly by pulling mutual friends and family members aside and telling them this person needs to be stirred up to, or by indirectly guiding social interactions so that more people agree with you. Well, all you're there going to do is cause the paranoia of the narcissist to become all the more rampant and just to see that there are more people that threaten their control and that you will be identified as the ringleader, meaning that the narcissist is going to come after you. It might be with a pity play. Why are you spreading rumours about me? Why are you being nasty about me? Why are you picking on me? It might be to threaten you. Don't think that you're clever going around trying to smear me and trying to besearch my good name. I've got my eye on you. I know what you're up to. Keep it up and you'll regret it. In some instances, you'll invite being smeared yourself. Where the narcissist recognise that you're enlisting others to join your cause, that threatens the narcissist's need for control. And therefore, by moving to the indirect assertion of control, they'll go around smearing you to other people, creating a clusterfuck. And remember, the narcissist is designed to do this. You're not. And it certainly will not frighten the narcissist. Once again, this is one of these preposterous articles which is headed How to Frighten a Narcissist, Tactics to Use Tired of being pushed around by someone with a big ego? Scaring a narcissistic person may seem like a tall order when they act so grandiose and confident all of the time, but it's actually quite easy to rattle them. In this article, we'll cover every strategy you need to strike fear in the heart of a narcissist and take your power back. Hmm. Well, I can safely say that of many of the articles that I've read, this is probably one of the most stupid. Narcissists do experience fear. Absolutely, they do. For instance, somebody running at them with a great big baseball bat threatening to smash their head in like a watermelon will induce fear in the narcissist and may well cause them to run away. But by setting firm boundaries, or calling them out when they cross a line, or speaking over them when they interrupt, or withholding intense emotional reactions, sticking to the facts, by teasing them playfully, offering your support, guiding them into expressing gratitude, being loud and proud in social settings, or enlisting others to join your cause, will never, ever frighten a narcissist. All you'll do is provide fuel, most of the time challenge fuel, and find yourself threatening the narcissist's need for control with adverse consequences. Once again, an article that doesn't know what it's talking about, and it's important for you to understand this so you don't make the mistakes. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.